welcome to the welcome to the Caddy Info Thursday night Cadillac chat. That that uh, my name is Bruce Nunnally. I'm I'm your host tonight. That I have with me from the Caddy Info Cadillac Forum, uh, Cadillac Jim. He's busy Howdy. working on his toolkit. Yeah, I've just uh, got the flag up. I'm here. And Texas Jim. Howdy. Thank you so much for joining me again. Now, we're doing these uh, live chats on Thursday nights, every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, which would be 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. on the West Coast, and I think 3 a.m. in Sweden. So if you're watching this with uh, Swedish subtitles, then let me know, and we'll try and get you live here on Google Plus with us so that you can watch it live instead, so that you can participate live instead. We may have uh, Body by Fisher join us. We may have Lori join us. If we do, they'll join in progress, and we'll be happy to see them. We've got a number of topics I wanted to uh, talk about tonight, and, and I gave you guys a homework assignment, which I don't think you, you uh, had an opportunity to do, but, I, but let's talk through it. And so my first topic was, so if you had $5,000, you're going to spend $5,000 on an automobile, then what would your favorite $5,000 automobile be? And, and, I'll, and I'll start you thinking this way, and, and you know this about me from the things I post on the site, but, but there are three cars that I would shop for that are in that range, luckily, right now. One of them is a uh, 1994 to 1996 Fleetwood Brougham, especially with the uh, trailer towing package, which gave it, you know, additional cooling for everything. The second one is a um, 89 to 92 Elante. The Elantes with about 90,000 miles on them are right in that $5,000 range now. The 93s still pull a little premium, but but the uh, earlier models, and that make, makes a very unique car to drive around as a weekend car now. And then the third car would be to reach back to get a 73 to 75, you know, uh, Eldorado, something in that line, you can occasionally see those come as low as $5,000. It would need more work, it would need more upkeep, but it would be uh, an interesting car for a weekend car. So so today's first question, $5,000, if you're going to spend $5,000 on a car, what would you get? Cadillac Jim? Well, I'd like to add one more to the list. Uh, the uh, 95 to 2002 Eldorados are in that range. And of course, uh, I'm uh, familiar with that because of my car. But among the ones you mentioned, uh, I would go for the Elante. Uh, uh, my second choice would be the other Eldorado, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, promise of handling and uh, the, the uh, you know, the Elante was my dream car for many years. The 93 with the North Star was the one that I really fixated on for years. But, of course, as you point out, that one uh, goes at a premium. Uh, however, the 4500 with that special fuel injection and other attributes was more than a match for the 4.9, and they did not switch when the 4.9 came out. Apparently, it wasn't uh, going to be around long enough to have a special version for a low-production car, and uh, it, it had the same horsepower as the 4.5 Elante motor. Uh, and the rest of the car, so a beautiful car. I really was uh, unhappy with Cadillac for failing to commit to that car at the time. Uh, of course, I don't run the business. I don't know why they did it, uh, but I still was very sorry to see it go. Now, the purists would argue that the 92 Elante actually had nicer seats than the 93. The 93, they, they went away from the, the, the uh, uh, more, you know, the nicer seats in the 92, uh, along with putting the North Star engine in it. Texas Jim, what do you think? $5,000, if you're going to spend $5,000, there's only five thousand dollars on a car. What would you get? Uh, I don't know enough about the Elante to even give an opinion. But my choice would probably be the Fleetwood Brougham with that three hundred and fifty LS one, because I am familiar with the LS one and I know what you can do with it. Now that's the LT one, which came right before the LS ones. Okay, even the LT one. There's all kinds of Chevy speed parts for it, and you can crank out some really serious horsepower on it and make a nice sleeper out of it. It's still 
it would still idle properly. It would still be tractable in town. But you know, you could you could almost double the horsepower on it without spending a ton of money on it. Absolutely. Or, and the reliability would be still be there too. Sorry. The reliability would still be there too. Absolutely. Yeah, that that wasn't a real corner carver of a chassis, but but I I think no one would argue that those those are are good, lasting, reliable designs. They made that same chassis for an extended period of time with great success. That that yeah. uh, and it and it has too much room in it. So. And well, when you. See, I, I'm sorry, Jim. Go ahead. See, I love I love the big ones with a lot of room. And I don't that's know why. That's the biggest just, car you could get, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I just do. That's just, you know, that's the kind I like. And with that, like, like we all said, you know, it would be reliable, it's dependable, and you could do a little work on it if it needed it. I'm not talking about the, the speed parts, mechanically or whatever, to fix it up since you only paid $5,000 for it. And make it as reliable as a real late model car. So then it wouldn't be a, a big stretch to jump in that thing and head off, you know, coast to coast in it and not worry about it breaking down when you get halfway there. So, you know, I, I think it would make a, a heck of a road car. Especially at $5,000. Cadillac, Jim, you were going to say something else? Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, car was not a bad handler. I mean, it uh, just it, well, corner cutter. It was not, but it was those cars handled perfectly well. And uh, uh, if you're going to do something like that, uh, all that would be required to support, say, doubling the horsepower, would be uh, 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 shocks, wheels, tires, and brakes. Exactly. And they use that same chassis on the. The Caprice police car. There you go. Parts are on the bin. And and the parts are, you know, the parts are all there. The you know, the heavier roll bars, the the bigger sway bars in the back, the heavy duty shocks, the heavy duty brakes, they're all there. All you have to do is just go get them, put them on. And if you if you could find a a wrecked police car in the salvage yard, you could do it real cheap. Oh, I, I think that there was a lot of, especially because the Impala SS was similar to, but not exactly the same as the Fleetwood Brougham. The Fleetwood Brougham was actually a little larger and had some had some features that the Impala SS didn't. But oh, because right. there's a, a wide following of Impala SS speed parts, then it would be easy to find the things that you need to build up the LT1. And if you really wanted to get extreme, you could probably pull the LT1 and put in an LS2 or an LS6 out of the CDSV, and, and, and it would be perfectly happy there. Or an LS7. Yeah, LS7. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> now, that gets us out of our $5,000 budget, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think the LS7 by itself is 20000 so, you know, Something it's, like it's that, expensive. Yeah. Okay, so, and I, and I think I know the answer to this next question from Texas Jim, but let me pose the question for you, that for about 35000 to $37,000, you can walk into a Cadillac dealer and buy either a brand new Cadillac SRX with a 3.6 liter engine or a new Cadillac CTS station wagon. Either one of them would give you, uh, you know, if you need more room or if you want the, the sitting up high view that the SRX gives you, either one of them would give you, you know, more room to carry the soccer team or more room for your cakes or guns or whatever, whatever you need more room for. And so if you are writing a check for one, if you're actually buying one, would you rather go pick up the Cadillac SRX or would you rather have the Cadillac CTS Sport Wagon? And and let me let me preface my question by saying <laughs> I never would have I never would have picked the SRX until I went and test drove one. And after I went and test drove one, then it completely changed my opinion of that car because of that beautiful uh uh, OLED display in the center and, and the accoutrement in the SRX that I really got a higher opinion of it. Let's start this time with Texas Jim because I think I know your answer. What do you think, SRX or a sport wagon? 
Well, well. Uh, I, well I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, that's good. Go kind of like Jim. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking uh, I'd have to drive one too, but uh, the CTS sport wagon is an awful attractive car to me, but I know very little about the SRX. It's really cool looking. Uh, if it's lighter, it has the same power plant, and therefore performs better, I would probably go with it after I test drove it. I, so I, I would have to do the test drive to decide. I think the, the sport wagon's actually quite a bit lighter than the SRX. Well, there you go. So Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> that was so, easy. So you yeah. go with the sport wagon, Texas yeah. Jim, what do you think? Well, I would want to drive them and compare them. I haven't driven the new ones. I've been afraid to. So, I'm afraid you, know, you like, write a check. Yeah. Well, like, you know, like the little boy that is coming home from school and he gets home and says, Mama, can I keep this puppy? It followed me home. You know, <laughs> I have been known to do that. But uh, so I refrain from going around them. About once a year, I come down with that disease called new car fever, sometimes twice a year. And at that time, I try to just lock myself in the house and stay away from dealerships. Uh, you know, and then after about a week or 10 days, you know, it'll subside. And then I'm back, you know, back. I have a little bit of restraint then. But, That's probably a good time to go on a road trip. <laughs> yeah, I've done that mm -hmm. too. <laughs> and then after a day or two driving mine out on the highway, especially going west, you know, where there's good roads, you know, and, and reasonable speed limits. After driving it for a day or two, just nice cruising down the road, listening to the radio, and looking at the scenery, I said, hell, I don't need a new car. This one's just fine. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's what I, that's the problem I run into lately is I'll look at, well, if they just took the ATS and they did this for the ATSV or if, they, or if, Let's see if I if I shopped for this car and then they put, brought this out and then I realized well I've got all those features I'm looking for in the driveway right now that, that it's got mm -hmm. you know this feature and this feature and this feature so maybe I'm happy. So, and okay. just don't know it. <laughs> and just well yeah so be happy so be happy. Mm -hmm. Cadillac racing last Sunday the Cadillacs were out racing in Long Beach. They're running in the Pirelli World Challenge. The Pirelli World Challenge, uh, they run GT cars and GTS cars both at the same time. So you have Camaros mm -hmm. on, the, on the track. The, the Cadillacs race principally against uh, the Volvos, the Corvettes. The Audis have joined this year. Uh, there's BMWs, but I think they're running GTS. And so, and you know, one of my favorite comments is that the Cadillac CTSV is one of the few cars that they have to detune it in order to make it fair for everyone else to race against, right? And mm -hmm. so the race car actually, they start with a street car uh, uh, to build up the race cars, and it has many things in common with the street car, but the race cars actually are not supercharged. They're running uh, racing V8s instead, and normally aspirated, and they have a heavy restrictor on them. And in one of the videos I posted this week, they showed that Venturi restrictor that they use where, where it's literally having to breathe through a straw in order to keep it from making too much power. So the, the Cadillacs, uh, it's a, it's a full-up factory team, Johnny O'Connell and Andy Pilgrim, and factory prepared cars. The, uh, it's a sprint series. The, the whole race lasts 50 minutes or, or a certain number of laps, and, and frequently, because they do standing starts and because it's a tight road course, frequently there are, there are wrecks and, and yellow flags during the course. They almost never run all the laps. But what do you think? Is, is this a, a good marketing tool for Cadillac? Is there some benefit to Cadillac out of participating in the racing? Cadillac, Jim, what do you think? Well, I think you're going to get a certain class of people who will uh, notice over a period of time that Cadillac continues to own the manufacturer's championship and the driver's championships. And Cadillac's strategy of uh, not going out there and trying to take the win every time and just collecting the points so that at the end of the year, they're on top. Uh, I think that's a very bright, well-considered strategy. The drivers are near 50, and they're very consistent. This last race, O'Connell uh, had uh, an engine blow on the last lap when he was, what, running third? And so, uh, but so he was he fit, in the lead on a lead. caution, cruising to the finish line and popped the radiator and went down and, and stopped on the track. Just So he finished I, seventh. 
and and Johnny was nice enough to retweet my comment about that last night today mm -hmm. uh, uh, this morning, but the yeah that was just heartbreaking. Yeah, but they still finished fifth and seventh, and uh, I, uh, that's a very respectable uh, set of. Uh, uh, performance, and I really think it bodes well for the rest of the year. Uh, it was uncertain to me how things were going to go this year. I guess I'm saying I'm interested in a follow the race, but because there's there's a model change, and I think that they were uncertain as to exactly what they were going to run or what they would be able to run under the rules because of the change in the models. And I know, no, they, they probably didn't have a new car ready, so they're probably running last year's chassis updated for this year instead of this year's model. I don't know that for sure, but uh, this may have had something to do with uh, uh, the problems. Also, the practice on this year's race, for anybody that followed it, was uh, horribly attenuated. Cadillac had an advantage because they've been there before. Both drivers have been there before. The cars have been there before. And uh, they weren't handicapped as much in the early laps. But the early laps are a zoo anyway. So, uh, but, but they, they, uh, 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 they did well. Uh, it was uh, this. This uh, race is always a nail biter because of the tra the nature of the track. As Bruce was saying, it's a dangerous, sharp track. Uh, it's a a road course. I li used to live in that area, and I I would drive through there. And as long as you're driving on the roads, everything's fine. But if you do like the racetrack does, and cross roads and do this and that, you have berm and camber changes and so forth. And it's not uh, a good track for uh, ultra low, ultra tight suspensions. And uh, there's, that's the cause of a lot of problems. And you can see the people adjusting for those in the live TV. And in this series, you actually get, when, if, when you win, you get more weight to carry on your car to make it, to make it fair in the next race. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I think the Cadillacs don't have the top speed advantage right now because of the way the cars are, are restricted. But they're, they're doing better in the corners and braking and in the corners mm -hmm. is what it looked like to me. Texas Jim, what do you think? Cadillac <laughs> racing benefits the brand, benefits sales or not? I believe it does. I believe it does benefit them. Uh not sure how to quantify it, but people that are into performance, even even the Porsche people and Audi people, you know, they see the Cadillacs out there beating the Porsches and Audi, and they said, "Hmm, that's you know, what's happening here?" So, at the very least, it can make them curious and and cause them to investigate Cadillac instead of just automatically going and buying another Audi. Yeah, and at the same time, I would I would probably follow it closer if I could remember to record it. But it seems like when I remember that it's on, it's just now over. <laughs> so I don't ever think ahead of time to record it so that I can watch it. My wife likes racing too, just about any kind of racing. Wow! Until loud noises got to bothering her real bad. Uh, we used to go out here to the local dirt track on Saturday night. My cousin had a car. He ran what they call super modified. And I'd go out there sometimes, work in the pit crew. And me and when I was in the real estate business, me and my partner, we sponsored a car out there. And <clears throat> I'd go out there. I'll go again, I was part of the pit crew. And... I did get to drive it once, but uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And but we uh, we used to go to the drag races all the time. And I've had some, you know, pretty decent drag cars, and got a handful of trophies, you know, here and there. And <clears throat> now she never she never drove any of my cars on the track. Uh, she drove. She drove a couple of them on the street. It, that's a long story. I won't go into that. But but she did a couple of races against guys that I was tired of racing, and I wanted to show them that <clears throat> their car just wasn't enough car, so I could let my wife drive my car, and she could still beat them. <laughs> you know, in a quarter mile. Right. And uh, after she did that, well, they quit wanting to race with me. Now, now we we didn't we didn't just race for fun. This was the kind of cars you know you put up a little money before you start the motors. But 
but over the couple of times, she liked to run over me once, but that's another story. We'll go to that some and other And I'm day. sure that was an accident. <laughs> yeah, it was. Stupid father track, and I didn't warm the slicks up. I told her to just leave it and drive and stand on it. When I, I was standing between the cars, I was going to flag mm -hmm. them off. And when I flagged them off, she stood on it. And with the powder track, it started turning sideways. And the back end like they got me before I could get out of the way. Luckily, the other guy come off of the line real hard. So I had room to run, you know. Good. But anyway. Did she still beat him? Yes, sir. <laughs> she most certainly did. She had to let up and get it straight and then get on it again. Yeah. But she'd caught him before they got to the end of the quarter. Excellent. Beat him by, beat him by about a you know, couple of feet. Yeah, good, good. I like let's, talk, good let's talk about dash cams for a moment uh, just, to, just to change pace mm -hmm. a bit. We've seen a lot of dash cam video from, from overseas. The Russians, apparently, everybody's got a dash cam. The uh, and and as Jim and I were chatting earlier about the lipstick cameras, I have a, a a small camera that I've used in the car with with some luck. The the interesting thing about the dash cams though is that they're automatically set up to record short video tracks over and over again and to overwrite. So they never run out of space. In other words, you tell it the subdirectory and you tell it how much space you want it to use on the card, and it will do a continuous roll of video in that space. So three meg at a time or three minutes at a time, and then once it gets to you know 12 gigabytes or whatever you told it, then it'll start rewriting the ones that were an hour ago, if you will. The other thing the dash cams are, are designed to do is that they'll do special crash videos and by that I mean if I suddenly jam on the brakes the dash cam will write a separate file that captures 10 seconds before I jammed on the brakes to 20 seconds after I jammed on the brakes it'll write that as a file that says hey something happened here so that you can pick it out of the dash cam video stream if you know if you can imagine if you open the subdirectory where the dash cams writing these files to there's 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 dozens of files, but it'll highlight for you, here's the file that had something interesting or something happened right on this file. So come look at this video file. And so there are features in these dash cams that make them interesting, you know, different than just running a video camera. And so uh, what do you think about dash cams in general? I think they're a good idea. Uh, you got to figure out where to put one and not get it in the way. And, uh, you know, you go, uh, uh, this, this, you know, I had somebody try to get me to put a plastic Jesus up on the dashboard of my El Dorado once. And I, I did not want to, uh, you know, put adhesive on the dashboard of my El Dorado. You know, uh, that song, that fine song notwithstanding. You know, I don't care if my rains or freezes as long as I've got my plastic Jesus riding on the dashboard of my car. You've heard that one? It's a fine classic. Um uh, <laughs> Uh, everybody here is from Texas, so we've all heard the song. Uh, at any rate, uh, I uh, but uh, if you can get a dash cam to where cam to where it uh, uh, wires and everything is uh, doesn't intrude into the car, or, or uh, you know just you just generally forget about it. Well, then yeah, I think it's a great idea. I would like to um, you know you know that backup camera's got me enthralled. I'd like to have one in the grill, so I'd have a going forward camera for parking too. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps the dash cam might be further up there with a different lens, you know, for being outside the windshield. Uh, that might help when it's raining, might hurt when it's raining, but yeah, it has a lot of possibilities. Uh, I noticed that the one Bruce was talking about on the forum today was uh, $500, and then I went on Amazon, and they have them as low as $50, typically $90. I'm sure there you get what you pay for, and there's a good reason for that $500. I, I did not delve into the differences between them. But I suspect uh, image quality, uh, reliability, uh, length of uh, storage, and features are what make the $500, such as a zoom lens, uh, uh, writing that uh, event file to a separate write protected file so that it can only be manually erased. Things of that nature are going to be in the more expensive ones, but not in the cheaper ones. And, and whether they overheat or not, yeah. <laughs> there, there's been quite a lot of discussion about making sure you get an authentic camera, and, and uh, the one I linked the, the the only U.S. sellers on eBay 
and they literally ship from Korea to you, that they're doing well with their Korean sales, but they don't have distribution here in the United States. And so when you order on eBay, they put it in the mail in South Korea and, and send it to you. And it uses a lot of voice prompts, but apparently it does have English and Korean voice prompts. Texas Jim, what do you think? Dash Cam? <clears throat> Well, I didn't know they had that capability. The only ones I'm familiar with is, you know, the GoPro type, you know, that just does a continuous video until it runs out of memory and then it stops. But I wasn't familiar with the attributes that it could just rewrite. So if I'm cruising down the highway through West Texas for three hours, there's no point in having a three-hour video. But, like you said, if you slam on the brakes and, you know, have to dodge some idiot, then it writes a video and shows what happened. And hope it would never happen, but if it came time to go to court, you've got the video to show what really happened. Or, you know, the way you and I drive out on the highway, just when you get to see another fun car, it might be fun just to have the video of it. You know, I liked the... The uh, the sample I posted in the for on the in the forum showed a CTS coupe just traveling alongside the thing. I just like stuff like that, even mm -hmm. where it's you know show me something interesting. But but I agree that the the main difference in the dash cams from just having a video camera is that it would would give you shorter segments and it and it. Uh, won't just give you a three hour, a single three hour video like my lipstick camera would. It will give me, you know, a series of three minute videos. Now you might have to still stop, you know, when you got to the next lunch stop, gas stop, whatever, and either switch out the the SD card so that you don't, so that it doesn't overwrite the file. You know, if I just got this cool video of a Lamborghini blew past me on the highway, I'd want to go save that file off, right? Right. So that it doesn't get overwritten or mark it for, I want to keep that one. Or, the, you know, the police pulled over the car in front of me or, you know, whatever comment I want to bring back to the forum, then then uh, I might have to stop and save those. But, but SD memory cards are so cheap now mm -hmm. that you could, you know, keep half a dozen of those in the yeah, dash yeah, cam yeah. and just yeah. pop them in there like chips, right? Yeah. Assuming they're easy to replace. Yeah, I, th I think all of them are. You just twist the back of it, and and uh, there's a slot right Pull there, and you pop it in. Yeah. Push the other one in. Yeah, that yeah. that's what I think. My camera uh, takes uh, compact flash. It's uh, getting long in the tooth, but uh, it's the same basic idea. I uh, it takes a fast one because it will shoot high HD video. And what I do because I shoot raw, I don't shoot much video with it, but I do shoot raw, which eats memory like potato chips. So I, I uh, just got a 32 gig. And I just don't worry about it anymore. And uh, that's what I would do if I had a dash cam. I just get one that was big enough that uh, where I didn't run out, and I could save entire files and start fresh in case I just wanted to do that, uh, and where I could save uh, special events and so forth, and just never worry about it. Assuming it would take a great big one, and if it's recent and that expensive, uh, it'll probably take a 3264 gig card if you can find one. But the only thing that I don't like about that, though, Jim, is that, like, if I go run a, a, a driving video, right, and I leave my house, I got a 15-minute course that I kind of run the car through normally mm -hmm. that has a combination of uh, open highways and tight corners and things when I'm trying to run, like my, when I was running those uh, uh, intake temperature tests after, mm -hmm. the, after the supercharger, after I put on the new uh, heat exchanger, then... If I get back, if I run my lipstick camera and have a 15-minute video file, then that's a big bulky file that I have to deal with, right? If right. the file were automatically sliced up into three-minute sequences so mm -hmm. that I could just flip through them and get, you know, here's the Cadillac going through a tight corner or here's where, you know, I saw mm -hmm. this interesting car or here's, I think that would actually be easier for me to use to put on the site than if I had, you know, this 20-minute <coughs> this, uh, 12 minute video file that then I have to go cut it up yeah, cut it up to use you, yeah you're going to have to edit the file uh, I, I didn't see that as a problem uh, because I think that if you're going to be posting videos you need some elementary uh, video editing anyway uh, that's what my sister was fussing me tonight is that to do more elementary video editing uh, so that uh, like when we post this video what I should be mm -hmm. doing is pulling 
it down from YouTube and adding an intro with a caddy info, you know, da 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 da, and adding a, a thing after the video that mm -hmm. explains how to contact us and so on. But yeah. so dash cams, how much would you pay for a dash cam? Would you rather have a $60 dash cam that just gives you video for liability purposes, or would you rather have a 1080p dash cam that was, you know, 240 340 bucks? Well, okay. The first thing I think I would look for, no matter what the price range was, as, as, as y'all have been talking, I've been thinking, that one of the things I would want would be a button on it that I could push that would say save the last 30 seconds or save the last two minutes or whatever. And then that would be like you were talking earlier in a protected file that wouldn't get overwritten. So if, if I'm again, use my example a while ago, just running out through West Texas for three hours. Well, as the Lamborghini blows by me, I could push the button and that would save that last, you know, minute or so. And then 20 miles down the road where he's pulled over by the highway patrol, after I go by that, I could push the button again, you know, and and the 20 minutes in between, which was totally uneventful, you know, ceases to exist because it will get overwritten again. I, I would want a feature like that where, I would have an option to push the button whenever I wanted to. Like if I'm following a drunk driver, and I've done that before, and I follow them, call 911, you know, tell them what highway we're on, which way we're going, things like that. And uh, if I had a video of them driving, I could give that to the cops. I don't have any sympathy whatsoever for a drunk out here driving a car. Sure. And, you know, I just don't. And it's not because I don't drink, because I used to. But, uh, and I'm not going to say I never drove a car when I shouldn't, because I'm sure I did. But at the same time, if I had got caught, I wouldn't have had any sympathy for me either, because I, I knew better, and I knew it wasn't right. And I don't have any sympathy for anybody else. And sure. if I can help take them off the road before they kill somebody, I'll do it in a heartbeat. All the better, yeah. So, Cadillac Jim, what do you think? What would you spend on a dash cam? Well, uh, I would have to look at what was available and how much it cost, but I would basically escalate the price until it got the features I wanted. I like the idea of having a push to save last 30 seconds uh, uh, in, a, in a separate uh, file that won't be automatically erased. Uh, I would like something that came with elementary video editing software that would allow me to cut it up. I don't necessarily have to be able to do production work like adding titles and uh, endings and so forth, but I would want to uh, be able to, to cut it up. I think I have that on my computer now. I don't do video myself, so I don't really know, but I have uh, the top end Nero software, which comes with some video editing capability. That might be enough. I don't know if it's video production or if I'd have to go out and buy something. But uh, generally speaking, if you buy a good camera like that, then it has sort of a free or light version of a video editing software, which will lead you into something that the camera's compatible with that does have the capability. Uh, and uh, that'll at least give you uh, uh, one option and uh, uh, possibly uh, some competition. So I, I think that uh, I would probably go for the $250 spread or, or maybe, you know, if I could find the features I wanted for less, fine. But I would want a zoom lens, uh, 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 event uh, alerting and uh, user alerting. Uh, by alerting, I mean save the, the last uh, 30 seconds or uh, the previous and following one minute or whatever. Uh, because I was thinking as you were talking about if I'd had uh, a video cam for that drive back from Texas, it wouldn't exactly have been uh, you know, world shaking. I don't think I'd have been a YouTube viral hit, but I sure would have had some good posts for Caddy Info. Yeah, uh, and, th and that's what we like is just the road the road stories that we enjoy, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, like cru going on cruise control through the twisties, driving through the traffic, you know, and on yeah. cruise control. I'd, I'd watch that. I didn't even yeah. know where the suspension button was on the thing. I was in the Turing mode. 
I, I didn't know where the 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 uh, what what do they call the other the, the track mode. I didn't I didn't even know where that was. I didn't know what those icons. I hadn't found most of the buttons on that car at the time. <laughs> And that's what I think the dash cams are attractive for is just place it and forget it. That yeah. you might also use another camera for a specific, you know, like when I'm trying to get a picture just of this or just of that. But the thing that's appealing to me about the dash cams is place it and forget it. Yeah. Meaning that you put it at the beginning of the trip, you make sure it's running. The the other feature that I've seen on some of them, not all of them, is they have Wi-Fi. And by that I mean I could pull up the dash cam video on my iPad, see how it looks live. Because I can also tell you from the lipstick cam, there's nothing worse than finding out at the end of a 20-minute test drive that the lipstick camera wasn't turned on or still had the lens cover on it, or, you know, some other problem. You don't want to find that out after you get into the video editing. Yeah, I also wanted to give a quick commercial for Microsoft Movie Maker just for quick video. Comes with, the soft, comes with uh, you know, free from Windows and, and makes it easy for simple video edits. And that's what I've done with several of the things that I've done for the site is pulled them up in that, added a music soundtrack, added subtitles, save it off as a file. It's free, uh, easy to use. And so now we, we're, uh, I got to watch our timer, but let me ask you a question because you guys uh, participate on Caddy Info and thank you for doing so. You also, uh, you know, participate on other kind of car forums and other Cadillac forums. What is it that we're not doing on Caddy Info that we ought to be doing more of? In the past, we've done, you know, some quizzes. We've done some contests. We we uh, uh, have done different things to emphasize uh, how much we appreciate people participating. And so what are the more things that we ought to be doing on Caddy Info that we're not doing? Well, you know, advertising is uh, something I mentioned last time. But the way I found Caddy Info was a web search. And the reason I stuck is because of, the level of information and the uh, the 100% uh, the constructive nature of the posts and the participants, uh, which is pretty well unique. So I would say uh, uh, talk with your web hosting company and see if you can get some elevation in the search engines. Because I think that's where most of the forum users come from is the search engines. Actually, I found it the same way when I first bought my BTS. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because I just wanted to learn more about my car. Yeah. Because I haven't, I hadn't had one that sophisticated. And of course, come to find out, Caddy Info happened to be more about the older cars. You know, no one had one like mine at that time. But you know, that was okay. I uh, I stayed on it for a little while and and got to reading it. Because I figured, heck, even if I read about an 03 or an 04, that's not that much different than mine. So I could still read and learn stuff. And then occasionally somebody would ask a question about an older car, which I've had plenty, that I could answer. Or at least that I could help with. And I got, I got started that way. And I've enjoyed it. Now, I'm on the DTS forum on the other board. But I don't ever go to the other sections. I'm just I'm just on the the DTS forum, and then I'm also on a truck forum. Now it's 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 totally different from any other forum I've ever been on. But I enjoy it. I spend you know a fair amount of time on it. I've been on other Cadillac forums that I found through web searches on the internet, and. I go there two or three times. Everybody's whining and crying and complaining, and you know, there there isn't hardly anything constructive going on. So you know, I don't ever go back. But on Caddy Info, people actually try to help each other, and I like that. And I uh. Now the part about getting it higher up in the search engines might help, might help traffic. I have noticed that we have a lot of people that come in, they ask a question, and they don't ever even come back to get an answer. And wander off, or, yeah. or they don't seem to, because they only make one post. 
or they can't find the answer or they don't subscribe to their own thread and they never get they never get emails that you know or they tell it not to send them emails and so they never get notified that there were responses and they don't find their way back uh, is it subscribing right. to your own thread an automatic thing, or do you have to? Opt I, in I on think it? it is, but you can when you're first setting up your profile, you can tell it not to email you under any circumstances. In which case, you Fair wouldn't, well. you know, you'd only get yeah. the notification on the forum, and they don't know enough about the forum yet to see that they got the notification. The, um, last topic, the. And this seems kind of backwards, but it, but it's something that I, I wish I could figure out a way to do it. And the idea is that we, you know, try and build up some small amount of funding on the site so that when people do kind of have, you know, so it almost works like a jackpot where, <laughs> where we build up some amount of funding on the site. And then when do, people do have a problem and they have to get, their car fixed or they you know they have large repairs then then we're able to send them you know okay you win the jackpot here you get you know the hundred dollars or the hundred and fifty dollars or the two hundred dollars or whatever we have built up in in the repair fund I've been doing a lot of thinking about that kind of thing because you raised the point uh, and uh, uh, I think that we need to be careful with cash I think that uh, Having a fund that pays for parts would be easier. I think that uh, the rules and uh, uh, the procedures need to be very carefully contrived because of uh, the obvious. You're going to draw flies. Yeah. And can. yeah. So I think that we need a face to face uh, background check, and uh, they uh, need to have a minimum time on the form and a minimum number of posts uh, to be eligible. And, uh, well, that's that's why I think we, I was thinking we would make it something that like the supporters have to vote on, right? Or or yeah, and I don't know how good. to make it where it's not too bureaucratic. But but we've had people on that you know, and I and I thinking about Carlo when Carlo yeah. is on, yeah. or or other people where you know I think everybody would have been in favor of if we could do something for them. Yeah. Then let's do that, right? Yeah. Uh, but we'd have to, as you say, it would have to be something that uh, uh, the supporters could know uh, that that was available, and then just IM me, maybe only in the supporter section, or maybe direct PM me and say, you know, gosh, I vote for mm -hmm. you know fifty dollars, a hundred dollars worth of funding for so and so, and then we could we could just keep a tally of. You know, here's what's in the pool right now and and available, and then figure out some method to nominate for awards. Yeah, I think we ought to also have at least one designated su a member of a subset of uh, supporters that have met face to face with uh, you uh, to do a face to face with the individual as, as a requirement. Texas Jim, you're going to add something. Uh yeah, I go how? blank if you call my name. That's how my brain works. And so, <laughs> okay, how would it be funded to start with? Well, the site would put the money in. It come out of the supporter dues. No, it would come out of income the site makes. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't mind chipping in. You know, ten or twenty bucks every once in a while. Yeah. You know, to help somebody out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we could make it to where. People could chip in if they chose to, but the um, um, the bulk of the funding to me is where where we in, in cases where we end up with money in excess of of what we need to run the site, then that we can take some of that and divert it to you know I I think of it kind of like sometimes one of the optional rules when people are playing Monopoly is that if you go to jail and you pay the fifty dollars and they put it in the center. And then if you have anybody who hits free parking, then they pick up that money from the center of the board. Right. So I'm kind of thinking of it like that as like free parking, <laughs> free parking money that, that we take some small amount of funding, divert it to, you know, a, a caddy info repair fund, if you will. And then yeah. uh, when we have a member that had, oh my gosh, I had this happen and I'm going to have to, and I'm thinking of, of uh, you know, one of our members recently, he had his car, 
uh, nice, and then he, he accidentally scratched it up in the garage, which I yeah. very closely relate to because I frequently have garage challenges. And, and now I have my garage completely cleaned out along the sides for that reason. But, but that struck me as something to say, you know, well, God, and he's agonizing because he went and got a quote for two thousand dollars to have the car resprayed, and so that would be something where you know if we could say, well, here we'll give you a five percent coupon or, or a, you know a ten percent coupon to take the edge off that two thousand dollar investment, then that would be attractive to me as a way to, and, and as I say, I, th I think back to when Carla was participating, and and she had a situation where if she just had you know, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. She could have saved the car. Yeah, she didn't need a whole lot. Yeah, I felt real bad. I felt real bad about that. And and if you make it at the, you know, we get tied up in things where if it's my money, then I got to worry about my money and how it works and so on. But if we had some amount of money where we say, you know, this money's dedicated, is budgeted just to help members. Here's, you know, and, and as you say, maybe it's a thing where we say you'd only consider it if a person has more than X number of posts on Caddy Info. And you only X consider it if months. Yeah, yeah. So that you don't have people show up and say, you know, I'm looking for a free ride for, you know, as you say, that would may attract right. the wrong kind of participants. But, but that's this spirit. I think it's directly in the spirit of what we try and do on the site, right? Absolutely. We look, at, look at, hey, how would we, now we could do the same thing where we say, well, instead of, instead of, um, you know, making it cash, we'll make it a repair manual or, you know, to your point, you know, let me send you the part you need. Yeah. And then that'll make it a, uh, you know, and we'll write the story up about, hey, this part went to that person from the site for this reason, da, da, da. I'm always keen on what's that that into a story, right? That goes on to the, what creates content to put on the site. So, if if you did it, if you did it sort of that way, okay. Just just let's just use Carla as an example. She needed some front end parts, and she had hurt her back and couldn't work, and you know she didn't need all that much, you know, to get the car running again, but she just flat didn't have it, and you could have ordered the part from Rock Auto or whoever and just had it sent to her. Because, you know, her brother, you know, he worked on the car and she just needed the parts, but they just didn't have the money to buy them. And yeah. I think that would work better and be a lot safer than just sending somebody a check. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that eliminates, you know, I always like... I'm I'm all about trust, but my my vast preference on any business dealing is that no trust is involved, right? I always want everything set up to where I, I trust you guys, but I always want everything set up to where I don't have to trust you, right? In yeah, other words, if you. I'm doing if I'm consulting for somebody, they pay me in advance, they pay me for every minute from when I leave the house to when I go meet with them, and they pay me a premium if I have to meet with them in person. And the reason for that is to keep people from wasting my time, right? And yeah. so, in, in other words, if they don't pay me, I don't show up. If they don't like my work, they stop paying me. So there's no trust involved that it's, it's a mutual respect, mutual benefit approach. And so, yeah, I, th I think you guys are making good, you're shaping the concept well because what we'd look for is a way to, because uh, the other thing you run into is the reason the reason somebody doesn't have a hundred dollars to fix it a Cadillac right is because they don't have a hundred dollars and so if you send them a hundred dollars then they may wisely spend that hundred dollars on you know getting on something other than the Cadillac <laughs> but if you right. send them a hood <laughs> then the hood's going on the Cadillac <laughs> it looked funny on Toyota yeah yeah and so so it may be to help them prioritize how they spend the money. We'd be better off sending them a shop manual, sending them the, the part that they need, sending them tires, you know, than we would be sending them money. And we might even get, uh, uh, if we get some publicity for this, we might even get buy-in from Rock Auto or one of the GM parts houses uh, to uh, become a sponsor that would help us with, uh, you know, uh, magnify our, our investment. 
yes. to their benefit as well as ours. So I think that it's it's a good idea, but the the, the, the devil's in the details, and it's going to be very carefully managed. Uh, uh, Bruce, I think that you have demonstrated the wherewithal to do that management. I'm not sure you want to take that on. Your plate is very full, I have noticed. <laughs> uh, mine is very full, and it's getting fuller by the minute. Uh, uh, but uh, I could help. Uh, Texas Jim? I'll try. Okay. You know, anything I can do, I'll help with. Well, you you uh, uh, never cease to amaze me with uh, the wisdom that you come up with unexpectedly from time to time. And that's always... <laughs> Always welcome in a committee environment. You know, let me get my let me get my wife in here, and I want to hear you say that again. No, um, I, I want to well, emphasize. I want to emphasize his point how unexpected it was, Texas Jim. Well, if no <laughs> elephant in the living room is going to trundle along through without Texas Jim noticing that its tail is too sharp. Excellent point. His tail is again. too. Sh no uh, elephant is no going to trample through the living room without you pointing out if its tail's too short. Well, that, yeah, that too. Observer of the obvious. Yeah. Well, that we. Uh, I would focus on the head, the, the feet, of the elephant, and I, I would never notice if it had a tail or not. Uh, but Texas Jim, nothing gets past him. So. No. Let's see. Now, b both both of y'all are educated, and I'm not. What the hell oh. does that make a difference? Well, call me Doctor Beard if you like. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just getting about the management part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all would know more about that. Uh, I, I suspect not, that this. I, don't think I suspect that, that this program, and I'm, I'm trying to. I'm thinking. I'm listening very carefully. Yeah. I'm listening very carefully to what Cadillac Jim is saying. Is I'm suspecting that this program needs to be something, and and I know we're talking about it on on the live broadcast. But I suspect that this program actually would benefit from being something that we don't talk about that much on the forum. Bingo. That we just look for those opportunities, right, or right. you know, just like uh, the way I met Lori, as I said, you know, here's a Cadillac owner, she's unhappy. I've got, I, I go out to eBay now and then when I can find lots of Cadillac-related things, and is is how I end up having uh, hats that I can give away to people. And so that was something that I could that I could do that you know change the complexion of her day for a day or two. So good. And, and I'm happy to do that. And so I think it's that sort of thing that when we see somebody struggling, then we look for, hey, is this an opportunity? And, and the only thing I need to do is channel you guys and Mike and some of the other regulars to say, hey, if you see this situation where there, there, you know, we could help give them an additional discount, we could help give them a coupon, we could help give them a, 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 a leg up, in solving this problem, getting their car back on the road, that I think that that would be an attractive way for us to do this. And 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 so maybe if we posted something only in the supporters forum, or maybe just chatting directly about it from uh, you know uh, the guys that regularly go there. KHE strikes me as somebody. Uh, that could easily pick out because he's always so good at giving air conditioning advice and so on, and could easily pick out somebody that that is deserving or not deserving of additional. You know, it's we get it can be frustrating when you're trying to help people on the site because people come and say, "My car's broken. I don't know what's wrong." And so you start down the diagnostic path with them, right? And you say, "Okay, yeah. there's a diagnostic path, and you need to check step one, and then." Based on their answers from step one, you go to step two. Based on the answers from step two, you either go to step three or step five. And then, they, and their next post is Nebraska bananas, apples, apples, apples. And they don't talk about did you check step one? Did you check right. step two? Or they say I've already been through steps one through fifteen and it was not conclusive. Well, that's a null answer, right? Because it's a diagnostic tree that it would it would tell you something. Yeah, yeah, tell me what your answer was. How did you check step one? And tell me what your answer. This this guy that that he said, well, I changed the I changed the coolant in the engine, and I took the radiator cap off, and it boiled over. Of but course, the temperature was still low. And I said, well, yeah, <laughs> that's what you would expect. That the normal yeah. operating temperature you were running pure water. The normal operating temperature mm -hmm. is above boiling for water and with no pressure and so but, why would you expect something different than what you observe okay yeah. if I could interject just a second a, a lot of people uh, well I don't know how many 
but a good number of people had cars when they had 180 degree thermostats out. Oh yeah, they many. didn't have cars that had 200 degree thermostats out. Mm -hmm. And you could take the radiator off of those cars and start it and let it sit there and idle all day long if it wasn't 100 degrees outside, and it would never boil over because it would, stay, it would stay below the 212. And this was clearly the situation in this case is the guy expected that he could run the car with the cap off and right. not have it overheat, and he was shocked when it did because he wasn't familiar with the operating temperature range of the North Star. Yeah, I was reading that thread too. Okay. I couldn't think of a polite way. <laughs> I promised to tell you two him kids. He was doing everything wrong. I promised you two kids I would run this these sessions on time, and so let me bring us back on time. We're already four minutes past due. We started yeah. a little bit late, so please, mm -hmm. please give me the benefit of a late start. I I want to uh, uh, wrap up by thanking you both for participating. I thoroughly enjoy these, and I, and I think of these as, if nothing else, as as fun chats among the three of us, hopefully that, that they're of interest to other people on the site as well. The Caddy Info is a, a Cadillac enthusiast site, www.caddyinfo.com, C-A-D-D-Y-I-N-F-O.com, where you can find the, the Cadillac Conversations blog, where you can find the forum that, of course, we're all members of and participate on. It's a place where people can come and talk about their Cadillacs uh, if they have a problem, if they don't have a problem, if they want to talk about how much they're enjoying the car, we talk about Cadillac racing, we talk about the new cars, we talk about the old cars. I, I'm always fascinated because people can post a question about timing of a 1939 <laughs> Cadillac and somebody will pop in and say, here's exactly what you do and be careful with this or be careful with that. Or they can talk about the brand new cars and people will pop in and say, did you think about this or my dealer warned me about this? And, and, and uh, the, the range of knowledge on the site. People occasionally email me directly or, or they'll post in the comments on the blog and I always tell them, please bring your comments back to the forum, your question back to the forum, because you get the benefit of hundreds of people considering your question instead of just Bruce. And and I can tell you, you're much better off with the wisdom of the forum than you are with just talking to, to uh, me as much as I enjoy the cars. Any last words for us, last words of wisdom for, before we wrap up this uh, Caddy Info Thursday night Cadillac chat, Cadillac Jim? I think we ought to have an offline discussion about the uh, uh, the, the uh, general help fund. Uh, and I, I, uh, I thoroughly agree with that. I've encountered users who are not capable, are not comfortable with public posting, who will send a PM, an identical PM to me and a couple of other users that they see have answered similar questions. And uh, just got it got to the point at one time I had a line in my signature saying, "Please don't send me email or PMs uh, yes. post on the forum." I don't know if it's still there or not. My signature's gotten pretty busy lately, but uh, uh, it, uh, that, it didn't help. Uh, but uh, well, it did help, but it didn't stop it. So I think we need to figure out uh, how to deal with those people. The problem about people who don't understand cars and post questions and don't uh, follow the trees and so forth that just requires patience. That's uh, that's uh, part of the duty of the board is to train people how to understand the process of fixing their own car. We train DIYers. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I've had a lot of iron engines that you could put pure water in and run with the cap off, and I did that while I flushed them, as a matter of fact. But, uh, uh, you know, with and without the thermostat open. But, but uh, uh, yeah, I understand that uh, if you have a modern aluminum engine, it's going to need 15 pounds and 50, 50 or better, or you're going to have steam bubbles in the head. Uh, that's uh, the way they're designed, and that's the way it is, even at idle once they're warmed up. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm ratifying everything we said, but I think we need an offline uh, discussion on the uh, the charity fund or whatever we decide to call it. It doesn't sound so patronizing. Good, good, and and I do want to share that whatever income the site ever makes, a portion of it always goes to the the North Texas Food Bank, and so we actually oh, the site wow. has has provided thousands of meals over the last year. Uh, Texas Jim, any other advice for us for this week before we wrap up our Cadillac chat? I think uh, an offline discussion would be good. And 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 I, I think we've had enough 
seed discussion that you guys keep thinking about it and and we'll look for opportunities that either we can use the PM in our three-way chat or we can look for other opportunities in the supporter chat or in the online chat and, and uh, we can think about what else we would need to do in, in order to uh, uh, make this happen but yeah the you know I think right off that that uh, I could find you know some small pool of money and then we can see what makes sense for uh, allocating that as we go we're just kind of keep it in the back of our heads it doesn't have to be something that you know we relieve every month that that, that I think it suits itself well for just looking for those opportunities where it really makes sense and somebody just needs you know that as I say, I think of it as a bad as a bad luck smoothener, and yes. just like with our friend that has a two thousand dollar paint bill, if we could take the edge off that for him, then that would be an opportunity to do some good, right? Or well, uh, or in the case where somebody uh, uh, literally just needed uh, two hundred dollars to keep their car on the road. Yeah, that that now that I would agree with, not the paint. Not, less. not the paint. <laughs> yeah. Not the paint. <laughs> See what I mean? We need Texas Jim. Yep, yep, yep. And 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 I appreciate. I am uh, over trusting on some of this, and I appreciate your input for how. Let's be careful here that we don't attract the wrong flies with the honey. Thank you very much, guys. Any last words before we end the broadcast? And then I, again, hold on for just a moment after I end the broadcast, please. Okay, nope. I'm going to end the broadcast at this okay. point. Thank you, uh, uh, Google Plus, for having this available for us yeah. and for you.